Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It's another beautiful day here at the Wizard Factory, where you subscribe for weekly videos exploring deeper understanding of the universe and ourselves. My name is Logan Hart. And I'm Brian Easterday. And I'm Sean Black. That's right. We're joined by <laughs> Sean Blacks. Many of you probably will recognize him. That's one of our most viewed interviews to date and definitely for good reason. We always seem to have a chemistry when we chat mm. and for a wide range of topics. So I think we're in for a good episode here today. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. You get more of this kind of content every week and uh, like the video real quick and let's get into it. So today- you guys, are, you guys are great. Thank you so much for having me back on and I really appreciate it. I always love talking to you guys. So this is super cool. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, it's an honor to have on. you brother. Thanks. So Sean, uh, I'll, I'll introduce you a little bit actually before we get into the, the topic, but Sean is a Norse pagan shaman. That is the title of our uh, episode. I'll go ahead and drop a link in the description on that if anyone wants to watch it. It's a three-part one and it's definitely a really great watch. But how, how would you describe yourself? You, you, you work with a, a school and a, a group of students? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a teacher. I have a school. I'm developing CAD ready to continue to you know other teachers to uh to to teach um different parts of it as well that's coming along well um my kind of sort of goal from this from kind of my my later adult years goal <laughs> is to uh provide the world with nine solid shaman and so i'm in the process of figuring out who can do that shaman practitioners and and people who just know the lore and all that kind of stuff yeah. and the, like know our ancient stuff um and support norse paganism that's kind of what I'm all about, really. Um, and that's my full time work. Um, I do consults and other things, of course, as well. But mind, body and spirit empowerment are, are what I do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Very cool. And, and um, with that said, we're, we're looking at our relationship to nature in the context of uh, a practical paganism and animistic mindset and operating system. And so we've definitely kind of touched on this concept many times on the podcast about how essentially everything is in this unified field of reality. <clears throat> and there is no actual separation between the self, the, your consciousness and the world that you're experiencing, whether it's your body or different experiences and everything like that. And um, we are meant to be, to put it simply, participants in larger ecosystems and this very sterile and synthetic world that has been fabricated and imposed upon us is is not really in our best interest and it mm -hmm. is by design creating disconnection and separation from nature which is actually what causes all sickness mental illness every type of suffering imaginable mm -hmm. Yeah, I would characterize what's going on in our contemporary day and age as bullshit slavery. You know, <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it, it's and it that's um, you know more a more educated way of explaining all that is that um, <clears throat> the illusions that are being created for us are designed to you know keep us just powerful enough to operate the machines that are necessary to to move forward, and that has that is in total contradiction with. Um, with our our natural existence you know mm -hmm. and it's part of what drove me back to pre-christian um the pre-christian understanding of of paganism in general and you know many of us who have done that have come to the conclusion that um you, paganism it doesn't exist without animism and there's some real important reasons why so um the first thing you know, I'm not going to assume that all the viewers watching right now understand what animism is and understanding animism kind of starts with just understanding that um, everything has a life force, everything has an energy, you know, even elemental things have energy. Um, and those of you who've worked with consciousness or magic or something like that, you kind of got a grasp on this, perhaps, but you may not be aware how deep it goes. And the other part that's so amazing is that, you know, um, frontier scientists in the fields of physics and um, and biology and um, at many of the health sciences, the, the people who are working at the forefront of new discoveries with regard to this stuff are confirming 
this concept. And what we're what we're talking about right now is being confirmed by mathematicians and people who have electron microscopes. And that's super fascinating. It's a cool time to be alive. And it's a very cool time to be a pagan. I and I, I really like that you, you both brought those points up because it, it kind of does give us a good framework to build off of here, which was a, a concept we had on last time, which is, is this idea of modern paganism, that it's very useful to be able to learn from the ancient past and the lore but to also be able to take modern technology and uh, scientific understanding and studies as just it, it's different ways of understanding the same thing. Yeah, and we each have of them have that. their own value. Like, so it, it's uh -huh. about like reconnecting the past and not just getting stuck in, like I said, a dogmatic way of thinking and being right. able to integrate new information and new discovered discoveries in a very a synergistic type of way or a synchronistic type of way. Uh, where you, you're bringing everything that's useful together. Yeah. Getting out of the packs of dogma is really important. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and it, it can come from anywhere. It's incredibly oh. insidious. And, you know, there's certain areas where it seems more concentrated to the point mm -hmm. where any common person can see, oh, like, yeah, like cult members and stuff like that. They know they can recognize dogma like that. But when it comes to, say, uh, allegiance to a flag or a, a you know a book or whatever you know people are even dogmatic about things far more ridiculous like they're you know where they get their coffee or something like that so yeah you know it's something yeah. to always be vigilant for just because you're not in a freaking cult going around wearing robes doesn't mean that you're immune to dogmatic thinking and that's exactly where you're most susceptible to it that's yeah. right as a matter of fact most of the cults of of today um you guys did an episode on scientism, which was really awesome. Um, and that that's the biggest uh, hurdle that I'm trying to help people overcome with regard to this, because the real cults wear white coats, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. that's a they big do. One. And it's it's ridiculous. Um, or they wear, you know, they wear suits and they go to Oval Offices. You know, mm -hmm. it's just it's insane. <clears throat> so our ancestors, the, the 450,000 years previous to all this bullshit, our ancestors didn't jive with that, and we did really, really well. And uh, we were not. There, there's no. Um, there's no medical evidence that indicates that our ancestors were any less intellectual than we are right now. So, you know, throw, I'm just throwing that out to kind of uh, diffuse some of the dogma that might be associated with. Well, our ancestors were primitive. Mm -hmm. No, they weren't. Not at all. <laughs> we're not. Yeah. Yeah. So. Where should we start with getting into this? There's so many directions to go. You guys uh, want to guide me a little bit so I don't... You would, real quick, you could even look at um, how quickly things are changing in this day and age, in our lifetimes, compared yeah. to the speed of advancement of even the any prior generation before. Uh, things are changing so much that you could look at one your own lifespan and say, were you more primitive before 4K TVs came out or right. even That's a great example. or whatever? Like, mm -hmm. did you somehow be like when the microwave hit the market, suddenly it unlocked a piece of your consciousness and you were like, <laughs> we have created the microwave. Like, it's because the Pleiadians gifted them to us, Logan. Like, you know, like they, they, right. they raised our consciousness. Great, great little upgrade right. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I'm sitting here thinking about it. I'm like, was, um, was I any less conscious before I could get midget porn anywhere in the world? <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. No, probably if that probably didn't you know, have that great effect on my That might be a misuse of consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unless you're into misters, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or a, a shrinking of your consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and a widening of your eyes simultaneously. Yeah. You know? yeah. What? Yeah. So, no, but seriously, um, yeah, th no, that's a great example, a really, really good example. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, and there are lots of other examples of that, too. But biologically, there's no indication whatsoever that, um, that, that we have evolved um, mentally, spiritually, or physically. As a matter of fact, most of the evidence, and you guys probably agree with me, it indicates quite the contrary, that mm -hmm. we have devolved to a degree. And, mm -hmm. and I, would, I would link most of that with... Um, you know, the various forms of slavery and, and, you know, there's all kinds of political things that, that cause that to happen too. But whenever you're taking, see freedom and responsibility go hand in hand, you know? So if you have more responsibility, you get used to having more responsibility. If you have less mm -hmm. and you got somebody else taking care of everything for you, 
that gives Absolutely. you more time for video games and you know whatever else <laughs> or you know whatever your thing is that isn't growing right mm -hmm. I agree with you there, but I'm having this thought about how um, is it that we're devolving or is that certain aspects of our consciousness are simply being rendered inert and dormant and tied down? What's the difference? Because, well, when you, I guess it's like a macro micro thing maybe mm -hmm. because you, you can think of when you say a word like evolution, it definitely in, evokes like big long timelines of, you know, millions of years kind of thing. Versus, We're going to talk about how that's not the case. Exactly. But go ahead. Fair go enough. Ahead. Fair. Even something is as seemingly concrete as genetics we're seeing sure. is a lot more malleable, of course. Oh, yeah. And, and I'm, I, I love that that's being uh, added in, but just, you know, as a compare and contrast, the thought of like the the shift of potential co consciousness, the potential that's there, say even let, let's just take our buddy Brian here for example. He he went from being a mercenary that wanted to go inflict harm with the military in the military <laughs> to, to doing what he he does now. That the potential of him and who he is today was still within him even back then, but it, it was just dormant. I'm just bringing that to the equation when looking at something like evolution. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Well, devolution happens from lack of um, awareness, right? Mm -hmm. So, and physically it happened. Now, the physical part that we're, that we're going to get into a little bit here in a minute um, is a huge part of that. Like if we take ourselves and isolate ourselves in one way or another, right? There are some, some temporary advantages to that, right? Like in the, in the form of uh, hermits or something like that, or, you know, just going off by yourself. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about as a lifestyle, you are reducing your interaction with the environment around you, okay? That, mm -hmm. is, that is counterproductive to animism. And since our, we as a species are developed on a foundation of animism, in other words, we grow better, smarter, faster with our, with our interaction with the world around us, right? So when we isolate ourselves and we wash our hands in Purell every 20 minutes and we, um, we uh, kill all the bacteria in our house, and in our environment, what we're doing at a cellular level is, um, is isolating ourselves from the communication of all those different organisms. And that all by itself can cause you to become less than what you were um, from a, in, you're just, I mean, you have to understand 45% of our, our, of our DNA that we think is, you know, like a carb, like is a carbon copy of our parents. That ain't true. 45% of it is viral. That comes from the interaction of other kinds of cells, prokaryotic, eukaryotic, all variety of other kinds of cells that are out there. And, um, you know, that communication is done in, in a way of uh, little, little things that are kind of like viruses. This is what the frontier biologists are understanding today. Um, they don't necessarily call them viruses, but virus is a perfectly good explanation for, I mean, that's a good thing to call them. That's adequate. That's correct. Anyway, so the more we take our physical body out of the interaction, like what's happening in society today, wherever nobody wants to go out, you know, because you got to wear a mask and then there's all that bullshit, right? That is reducing our inputs on a, on a cellular level. Um, and then we focus our, our consciousness inputs, the things that were, you know, our five senses, we tend to focus those things on this little box that we're using right now, for example, um, it, because we don't have those other interactions, but we still have that need for interaction, for so, being social. So these things and uh, the changes that have happened to the family dynamic over the last, you know, couple thousand years and a variety of other things have all contributed to a... Um, our experience is reduced. The experience is the only way that we become something more. So if we reduce the inputs of experience, um, you know, responsibility included with, like we're talking about the balance between freedom and responsibility. If we reduce that, then we become less. Mm. Man, dude, yeah, this has hit me here, Brian, you're going to like this too, because it's like you looking at awareness creates choice but from the law of correspondence level where it, it, it's mm -hmm. a two-way street, creating this aware choice, uh, but choice also creates awareness also. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And it's uh -huh. because it's those experiences that choosing those things brings about that also raises Continue your awareness your further. It's mm -hmm. that feedback loop of interplay. And yep. so, mm -hmm. of course, looking, it's so relevant in today's climate with everything going on. We're talking about viruses here. But also, if you really want to shut down a person or a collective of people's consciousness, mm -hmm. you reduce how many choices they have but then also reduce their awareness of what choices they have. Right. That, Censorship. That, mm -hmm. It's cutting it off on both yeah, ends. Both of ends. The feed. Yep. yep. Ab absolutely. Uh, well, and you know, it, as I, you were explaining, you know, like how we're in society, people are isolating themselves to the point that th they're kind of the only input in their environment, you know, as, yeah. as much as possible. It, it's very similar to like monoculture. Yeah, it is. Where you're just what, growing the one crop. And there's mm -hmm. like no ecosystem, no variety there. And you see what happens in those, you know, like I'm, I'm Kansas. I can tell you what happens. Like, you know, the, yeah. it, it, everything is shit, you know, that like we get dust bowls or things like that just because they didn't take care of the land and that they over, over farmed it. And, you know, the mm. rivers are filled with runoff, uh, you know, of all the topsoil and things like that versus like permaculture where you have this ecosystem where it's a community that is interacting in a very uh symbiotic way mm -hmm. it's not one thing dominating another so like you know th those things being exposed to each other they support you know like the trees support the climbers you know the the dead wood is decomposed by mushrooms but then those mushrooms also you know like help break down that wood and mm. then turn it into soil for new things like it's it's an entire and, yeah and they provide a communication a, network they provide an all the way through a neural network, network for everything in there yeah, yep. yeah, including like uh, the development to like new kinds of viruses or potential threats to that ecosystem. The mycelium of the mushrooms will actually start to develop uh, antibodies and things specifically for that, which mm -hmm. you then actually goes yes. up into the fruit of the mushroom mm -hmm. that can then, depending on the species of mushroom, can then be ingested and then brought into the ecosystem into actual like, you know, species. So, you know, it's amazing, but just to think about how how much beauty and interplay mm -hmm. is in a system like that mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and that that is what health is that where growth and things are actually going to evolve and to thrive holistic First, a system where everything is isolated everything is cut off from source and everything else and it's mm -hmm. alone and if you think about like why would a ruling class want you to feel alone because <laughs> the last thing they want you to do is realize like how strong we all are together mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and this, I highly this theme of communication. Class. Yes. Go ahead, yeah. sorry. This, this theme of communication is really coming out big because it's like l taking it back to the animist perspective that everything is just the all try experiencing itself subjectively. Mm -hmm. How could it ever do that without communication, without the <laughs> flow of information? Yeah. Uh -huh. Every time you take a bite of food, you're interact, you're, you're receiving that information from the sun, from the earth, all of that all the mm -hmm. elements combined and everything like that. And, and it's just like this, this, um, the microbial ecosystem is really the key because it's like the, it's almost like the force, the invisible communication network that binds everything together when, when, you know, bacteria and things are like entering and leaving the body and, and moving around. Uh, even in Star Wars, Mm -hmm. The force comes from a, a, a microscopic organisms called midichlorians that live in your cells. Like that's almost like a dual meaning there because yes, the, the life force that, you know, like the chi energy that mm -hmm. embodies everything, but then it's saying that it's very connected to your the cellular level. Mm -hmm. And that's how that information is most being shared. Yeah, and definitely. how they're, and then again, and what is their, the theme with them? fucking social distancing I <laughs> yeah. quarantine yeah. wear a mask barrier like it's yeah. it's just signal after signal triple mask and anal swabs the next on the list <laughs> now <laughs> that's what's coming don't mix that up <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um so let's talk about let's talk about animism and how it's completely unavoidable okay and why it's not supposed to be that way let's talk about you know, there's we've got some we got some guys that are doing um, some fantastic work in the in the field of physics. Okay, and when you're talking about the communication, okay, here's a perfect example of that. 
Um, part of uh, Nazim Haramain's um, explanation of unified field theory, and this is super important to anybody who is um, studying shamanism or practicing with their consciousness, or really every pagan should know a little bit about this. Every pagan, everyone, everyone who claims to be a pagan. You know, I'm not talking about plagans. I'm talking about people that actually live it. <laughs> you know, because there's plenty of fucking plagans out there, and they are a waste of my time in most cases. <laughs> But some of them bloom into some interesting people, and that's cool. But all that bullshit aside. Okay, so we've got Nazim Haramain, and his description of unified mm -hmm. field theory indicates real clearly. And I'm just going to break it down real quick, and then we'll move to the biology. But so Nazim Haramain, he's got this, this way of understanding. There's like a, an as above, so below sort of correspondence example that he's using in his, um, in his mathematic equations. But one of the things that he shows is there's these things called planks, P-L-A-N-C-K, because they're named after the guy who invented them. Uh, recognized him. He didn't invent him. <laughs> <laughs> so planks, planks are like the bits of the universe, right? Like when I say bits, I'm talking about ones and O's. Okay. So they're information. And um, according to his, um, according to his mathematics, uh, your average um, proton has enough Planck information within it to create an entire universe. Okay. And that reminded me, uh, so the communication, what that means is um, each one of those planks probably has a corresponding plank in every other sort of proton that's out there, right? And so that works like blockchain. So any one of these, if you understand what blockchain is, any one of these um, uh, planks corresponds to another plank in another place, and they're all sort of created like the same. And so the information is available uh, even if you have just one proton, you can recreate the entire universe if it's the right one. So that's kind of one of the theories that unified field theory brings to it in that micro communication kind of way where everything mm -hmm. is connected, you know. Fractalization. Yeah, exactly. All within yes. the one. Right, right. And that's a great way to explain it, too. And there's a lot of great ways to explain it. And it's a complicated thing until you get it and then you see it everywhere, right? <laughs> complicated simplicity. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. um, our ancestors, for example, explained a version of this by using the Ganunga Gap as an explanatory uh, thing. The mm -hmm. Ganunga Gap exists within everything. We're in it right now. It's all around us, that sort of thing. Okay, so it's the, it's the connected sort of universe, right? Well, frontier biology has come to some really fascinating conclusions now, too. And we'll, I'll be bringing this back around to the animism, so just bear with me. <laughs> All right, so according to a lot of biologists who are looking at this stuff, looking at the, at the virome, as they call it, in other words, the study of the world of viruses, what they're coming to understand is that um, viruses are very likely not pathogens at all and actually are updates or forms of communication between single-celled organisms. Programs. And, right, right. So it's like the viruses are a, um, are a language Mm -hmm. that single cell organisms use to communicate with each other. Not unlike the force that we were talking about before. And let me explain how vast this is, okay? Just in the air alone, the air around you watching this right now, if you're watching this right now, the air around you has 10 to the 31st power, right? <laughs> has 10 to the 31st <laughs> power of viruses. That's the number, okay? To put that in context, because that's a ridiculously large number, to put that in context, that's 10 million times more than there are stars in the known universe. Oh, wow. That's just the air. The soil has about the same number, and so does the water, okay? Um, so the guys who are really studying this stuff um, are finding out some fascinating, really, really fascinating information, but they're also doing something amazing, which is going back to the basics, right? Like there's a guy, uh, there's a German um, uh, scientist and doctor, uh, some sort of a practitioner. He's been studying uh, virology and uh, uh, epidemiology and some other things for most of his career. Um, he kind of sort of discovered one day that nobody had ever isolated the measles virus. Nobody had ever isolated it. In other words, nobody really knows for sure if there is a virus that causes measles or if it has some other cause altogether. So the reason I mention that is because it's really, really important that we not devote a whole hell of a lot of attention into something that we call scientism, right? But how are we supposed hey. to sell a vaccine? 
bingo <laughs> you got to make everybody afraid okay all right come as it uh as it turns out beauchamp is actually a lot more uh if you guys know who he is he was a contemporary of um uh, pasteur right uh beauchamp had the idea that your environment and your terrain your body the condition of you is more important than you know that's why you know if if you, you expose 15 people to pathogen x only a few of them will get it because of their um their environment and the their body terrain. yeah yeah their their um their health and the the most brilliant doctors that we have uh right now can't quantify your immune system in other words if i go to a, an immunologist and i say can you tell me how my immune system is today he can't do it he knows he can't do it so a little bit of um understanding the amount of hubris that is brought forward into these uh into what is being sold to us as science hmm. it's a really important thing to understand the context like they don't have it all worked out there are new discoveries all the time that are fantastic and wipe out the other stuff but economically we're remaining a slave to the way of thinking that we're we're in right now if you listen to mainstream media and all that if you don't if you're actually out here looking for your own answers and being responsible and using the freedom of speech and freedom of uh expression that you have you can find things that contradict all that shit what does all that have to do with animism okay here we go well as we mentioned before in here we we're talking about 45 percent or more of your it could be 50 percent of your dna is is brought to you through viruses okay um so that means the little single celled organisms out there that are they're sending messages to you about your environment to the cells in your body so that they understand how to adapt to whatever your environment is okay and um the works of guys like uh, bruce lipton uh back up this kind of talk that mm -hmm. i'm talking about right now if you guys don't know who bruce lipton is you need to go check out uh mm -hmm. biology of belief. belief yeah yeah it'll blow your mind mm -hmm. okay and so um Animism is a way of consciously recognizing all this important shit and all these connections that I'm talking about right now. Okay. The communication that happens from all at, at these small, tiny levels is happening all the time to you. You are, in fact, um, full of uh, critters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, just to make it simple, those critters came to you from outside of you, and they are part of the world around you. They are inside you and outside you. So the ignorance of animism is one of the most ridiculous things that you can engage in. I mean, even a lot of atheists don't even do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, like you don't, and, and I'm damn near an atheist myself. I don't have any beliefs personally. You know what I'm saying? I have experiences my experiences are things that other people believe in but haven't experienced if that makes sense um but that's the crazy shit about being a shaman i suppose um but anyway the point is the animistic world is alive inside you and you would not be alive without it there would not be mammals without viruses so the whole concept of reality of looking at that stuff is the enemy and looking at conquering nature and that whole concept you know all that shit came along right around 1871 with the publishing of some material about how animism is uh is primitive and ridiculous and stupid because if we were animistic then we wouldn't have launched into our industrial age which happened about that time which is part of why all the literature came out to say how stupid animism is right <laughs> so we're coming back around um we're we're not we're starting to quit devolving and we're starting to evolve a little bit again maybe one day we can catch up to where our ancestors were you know mm -hmm. that would right be yeah i i like uh when you're bringing up the terrain theory yeah you know and, and let's let's use a nice little a animistic uh you know metaphor here you imagine a garden right and some kind of invasive species or something comes into that garden or some kind of disease and there's only a, a certain type of plants there. The soil, the terrain literally is not very good. It's not very healthy. Well, those are gonna be more susceptible to that disease and then and therefore then they'll perish. They won't make it, they won't survive. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have a healthy garden with a lot of variety 
and healthy soil, a uh, living soil, which I think is something that we can kind of, you know, move into kind of looking at that there. Uh-huh. Um, and you look at that soil as a living organism, it then has that ability because it's had that exposure to all these different influences. It has the ability to adapt to those. Mm-hmm. You know, you imagine going through life and you only ever did one thing and you lived in a little box in a pure white room and you never fucking went anywhere. You wouldn't be equipped to do shit outside of sitting in that fucking room because mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's, that's mm-hmm. all the experience that you've had. Right. You know, and so that's, the that's limitation why exposure to all these things about. is so important. It, exactly. It's a limitation to evolution because you're, that's, you're limiting that's the, the innocent. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, That's the missing piece, I think, when it comes to confidence, because everybody says that they wish that they had more confidence, but they don't understand that the only way to get that is to put yourself in challenging situations that you fucking crush it in and and makes you feel like, damn, I'm kind of a badass that could have really gone (laughs) gone badly for me. But I and, and then the more you basically you're showing yourself you're programming your own brain that yes i can yes i can i could fucking handle whatever you throw at me i didn't give a shit that's where that actually comes from doesn't right, matter yeah. if, if it's like talking to girls or literally like you know speaking your mind and and like standing up for what you want or what's right or whatever mm-hmm. it is yeah yeah i i think i've definitely lived that example and i continue to as much <laughs> as possible i would say that if I asked the people around me, uh, they would probably all agree that they would prefer me to have less confidence. Yeah. <laughs> it's you know, a balanced thing. Yeah, but I was one of those, yeah, it is a balanced thing, but you know, I was one of those privates that had his hand up volunteering for stupid shit yeah. all the time. And, you know, yeah. you don't want to get voluntold, you know, right, going right, anyway, right. so you might as well be first. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah, I made a I made a habit of being the uh, the dumbest and lowest ranking guy in the room in most cases. <laughs> you know, and so as a result, I learned a lot. I got a lot of experience. Yeah, that's great. Some of them sucked. Uh, but no, uh, tying back in with the soil, though, I think as some something else we could look at that that concept mm-hmm. of the living soil and seeing that like yeah, everything is literally this uh, massive uh, amalgamation of all these different you know viruses and nutrients mm-hmm. and elements and just everything's just all brought together that very much like you know so instead of just looking at the soil like oh that's just dirt right it's a very simplistic way to look at it where if you look the animist worldview is oh that's a living being Uh right that i'm connected with right it's the same as looking at your body like i'm just i'm just a simple body instead of recognizing your body is also a huge community of other living organisms it's one in the same you know yeah. And when you do something like um, taking super strength antibiotics, right, because you believe in germ theory, you're, that's your religious <laughs> belief. And it is a yeah. religious belief. Mm-hmm. Um, you follow something like that. You're like, oh, I'm sick. I need antibiotics. So, you know, it, because that's your programming, you go do that. You wipe out more of the um, you indiscriminately wipe out the, the, the flora in your body. And mm-hmm. I think just in your gut, it happens all over all throughout your body, wherever your blood flows to. Um, you mm-hmm. start doing that shit and you wonder why you get sicker because you've thrown the balance of, of things out. You mm-hmm. know, every one of the organ systems that you have has a natural habitat of flora and fauna on it. OK, mm-hmm. the, the, these bacteria help the function of every single organ in your body. If they would have taught me this in medical school, you know, 20 years ago, I would have uh, probably stuck with it, you know, but instead that ain't what it was about. And as a result, I I wound up dropping out of that shit because I was like, I'm not ever going to be able to accomplish what I want to accomplish doing that. I'm never going to be able to help people get stronger, faster, better. None of that by giving them drugs that, that only stop or slow down a metabolic process. And that's what all drugs do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so the, there's a, there's a, um, there's like (laughs) pagans and heathens and hippies have a lot of shit in common. Okay. And um, there's a reason for that. Um, and also people who, people who just want to be healthy also have these things in common. They keep looking, you know, sometimes it takes you getting devastatingly ill. You know, certainly if you're following the shaman path, you've had this experience, you know, death and also real, real fucked up illness that has caused you to um, get your nose to the grindstone and figure out how to survive. You know, I've had that unfortunately experience a couple of times, but it's made me a subject matter expert in some of this stuff and uh, it's helped me to recognize that um recognize the hubris of the industrial medical circumstance that we live in now 
-hmm. So we're not separate at all in any way from animism. Um, mm -hmm. So when you understand that, it helps you uh, explore it more and it gives you a little bit of motivation to go figure out what does animism mean from a mental perspective, from a physical perspective and a, um, an energetic or spiritual perspective. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, they're all just reflections of each other. They are. They all correspond, and mm -hmm. they're all interlinked. I mean, the weird, yep. the the web of weird is those things. You know. Yes. Uh -huh. An another thing that I was reflecting back on uh, at, regarding the whole evolution thing that we were discussing earlier, which actually kind of ties into the next point, uh, is about the the evolution of the left brain intelligence that have that's created the technocracy and everything like that versus mm -hmm. yes. the devolution of the right brain and should we say heart-based and emotional-based intelligence that has been suppressed and it you, there's still a lot of kind of polarization to both in in within in each individual but at large i'd say i mean you could you could just look at society as the the mirror of that that we do have amazing technology at our fingertips that is quite significantly changing and affecting our very consciousness. Blockchain is a great example of that. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, mental illness and depression and all these things are at a fucking all time high. And there's a relationship to that. Mm -hmm. There's a lack of balance between um, biological technological awareness and mm, uh, which, our, which our body is the ultimate technology, which yes. we have yet to fully understand or read the, you know, figure out the, the owner's manual or so funny you say owner's manual because um, Dr. John Bergman, one of my favorite teachers, um, he has something called, he has a, a video series called the owner's manual. And it's all about, you know, health biology and how to understand what you can do and how it doesn't fucking cost anything. You know what I mean? Nice. Like it really doesn't. It doesn't cost you right. a dime. And that's why it's a big threat, you know. But <laughs> yeah, on that same note, you know, we're a huge threat. This whole way of thinking, the whole heathen way of thinking and pagan way of thinking is a... Yeah is a massive threat to the establishment. And yeah. I, I can't help but wonder if that isn't why we saw, um, you know, uh, somebody attempting to represent himself as a heathen um, on national news in a, in a right. very, very bad light, you know? Anyway, I'm not, I don't want to get into all that because it's off topic, right. but no, you know what I'm saying though? That very it's interesting like, psychic weather. Um, so, something, you know, uh, bring about the modern age is like we, we see very much like I said the technology very much is evolving but mm -hmm. if we're not evolving with it that that's mm -hmm. you know that's the catch right um and and i think that leads into this this next point that we want to bring up which and, and logan you kind of mentioned this a little bit is the technocracy of like mm -hmm. how like the the ruling class their ideal is they're very much into this whole transhumanistic idea um, oh yeah and and we're thinking that they can uh, design a system better than nature you know like the, the likes of the amount of hubris within there uh you know and and uh i think when we were doing our little pre-chat uh sean you had, you had mentioned just like said the, the other how that is kind of like the ultimate hubris to think that you can evolve beyond that system would you, would you like to expound upon that a little bit definitely um well first of all i like to say as a shaman i'm not afraid of ai at all and as soon as right. it becomes conscious then I'll be able to communicate with it. And so will other people who have the same kind of awareness skills that I do. So I have no freaking fear of that at all. And that's, mm -hmm. I want to knock that out of the way as, you know, because a lot of people sure. will be like, oh, he's a shaman. He's about ancient stuff. He's going to be afraid of this, afraid of that. Not at all, not even close. Uh, but the, the idea that, um, that technologically we're going to be able to come up with something now, AI might be able to come up with something comparable to biology, but we don't, um, we don't, we're not there yet. So tampering with it, like in the form of, uh, say, mRNA vaccines, and or it's not even a vaccine, it's a gene therapy. But anyway, mRNA introduction into our body and all these other kinds of stupid ass things that we're doing. These are all experiments, okay? To approach that from the idea that they have it knocked out and they understand it is ridiculous because they don't. If you think that they do, you've been, you're lying to yourself. That, that same kind of concept applies to a lot of the um, uh, transhumanism that we're uh, talking about these these days. You know what I'm saying? I, linking myself into the consciousness of an AI through wires um, is totally unnecessary. I mean, we can we need to be able to recognize that we have 
we already have that technology. So building on this other, uh, the, this transhumanism from the theocracy as it's presented to us right now is super ridiculous and super infantile. And we already have a system in place that is way more powerful. The problem is it can't be centralized. Um, our individual consciousness and our collective consciousness works again, and I'm going to bring this up again. It, it works a lot like blockchain. There's copies of it everywhere. You can't fuck it up. You can't reduce it. You can't, you can't take it away. Okay. So collective consciousness is an example. We know that it's exists. It's been proven. It's mathematically, I mean, you can look at it a hundred different ways. It's there. It's there in lots of other species too. Okay. So we take this collective consciousness and explore that a little bit that would be the thing to do, but you're not going to find a lot of energy in the form of cash or anything else being driven that way because you can't centralize it. You can't control it. That's another huge reason why what we do here and what we talk about is a huge threat to the establishment because the hubris involved in transhumanism for the purpose of uh, immortality is, is about the at least at this point, is about the most ridiculous thing, and, and um, it's just stupid, because we already have immortality. If we develop our consciousness in such a way, we can understand that, and we can tap into that, you know. The awareness of our ancestors' experiences firsthand is certainly within the realm of your average medium, okay? Like your average, you don't even have to be really good at it to do that, you know? Um, so <laughs> I'm, I'm having this image Sorry. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go I, ahead. I don't want to cut you off. No, um, no. This idea of like putting in different, we have like the option to watch any movie we want in the whole yeah. world. But because we don't for sure know that, then fear makes it so that we just want to like keep watching the, the same movie forever. Right. How does that help us? It's not another movie. Right. It's, it's stagnation. Exactly. But that's right. not, that's the, the whole idea of immortality and the elitist mindset too because that's that's it's all about that becoming god kind of thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Very wisdom is information and experience combined right that's that's one of the ways that we explain wisdom and, and applied um, yeah yeah the application of information not just the mm -hmm. not just the the knowing you know right. like you right. can learn all the lore and not be a heathen you mm -hmm. know like, and not even be close because you don't understand how it works or what it does or what yes. it does not, you know? Yes. And that hypothetical that you're talking about, mm -hmm. it kind of ties back to that potential concept that I was getting at earlier about right. like the, the inherent potential of say our bodies. If we're, we don't know that we're like driving around Lamborghinis, but we only go 10 miles an hour and stop at every little stop sign and like, what's the point of you even having it? And then mm -hmm. I don't know how to carry it from there as far as the whole tra transhuman thing, but it's it's like it's it's that kind of magic pill mentality instead yeah. of wanting mm -hmm. to strive and work mm -hmm. to unlock what's already there and said, can't I just like plug something in, like just just in, implant something and then I just get it, you know, like I want to yeah. plug in my Roku and get you know ten thousand channels just like that immediately. Yeah, kind of. mm -hmm. I got one word for you. Gebo. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, got to put in to get back. Mm -hmm. What are you so trading for that instant meat for that instant material gratification? Yep. Yep. Now you're giving up your ability. A quick little thing I was thinking about too is like, you know, you were mentioning earlier, and I think this tied ties in good with the if we want to look at like the transhumanist agenda mm -hmm. and, and what's going on in the world, you know, with like the the Rona shit and everything like that and, and this vaccine. Uh we, gene we therapy is gene yeah, therapy yeah or yeah yeah gene therapy yeah yeah you want to look at it. it's it's terrible shit but yeah. um when you can see that like viruses are actually like if you look at them as a form of communication on a right. cellular level censorship and, and we were talking about how you control and limit someone's reality based on the information and the experience that they have but as well as like what we have on a cellular level Right. So by changing that experience, it change you know changes individuals like I said on that cellular level by like limiting from the by ground limiting up that. by limiting that experience, you know. Mm -hmm. So you see just how uh, vicious and heinous, malicious, um, fucking and malicious this is. You know these yeah. these are evil little fuckers. Like, you know like uh, invisible got old, barriers. Old Bill the... Mangala up there trying to experiment exactly. on everybody. 
Dude, you know, <laughs> it's it's yeah. the glass ceiling. That's the perfect analogy of how the the social engineers want us to see is just like, you know, reach for the stars, even though you could never get there. It's like it's like all the kids out there that have hope of like making it into the NBA or being the next yeah. AZ or something like that. Yeah. You know, sorry, kid, but it ain't going to happen. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, totally. It's <laughs> mm. I mean, yeah. The, the whole system is set up that way, you know, it's the, you know, dangling of the carrot and, you know, mm -hmm. and um, all the inputs are about all the things that money can do for you so that you devote your life to be a good slave and try to make as much money as you can. And that, in fact, fucks you up. Um, That's mm -hmm. like the reverse, because then it's like promising all this potential that will never actually happen. It's and, the inverse right. of what we were talking about. Before. Of taking that potential and then making it happen. Yeah, that, you know, that's <laughs> right. very, yeah, very good. And, you know, who's the who's the teacher, you know, of those kind of things? That is Saturn, you know, mm -hmm. astrologically, right. it's cosmic law. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that having to do hard work and be disciplined and just look at things objectively how they are, not as how you wish them to be. Right. You know, um, so you know, here's an alternative. Here's an alternative to transhumanism. OK, because what would we be if we're just sitting here bagging on something without giving an alternative? Right. It's like that's worthless. And I'm not interested in hypocrisy. There's enough of that shit floating around. So how about instead of transhumanism, we work on superhumanism. All right. And, which is actually pretty easy to do these days because the bar is set really low. <laughs> really, really you know? like if, if you can bike around the block that makes you a superhuman. Right. Yeah. i mean you know technically I mean? if the average is subhuman then to be superhuman you only need to be human at this point right. like, we'll go right. from there start there right. and go from there yeah exactly <laughs> but no seriously so there's some here i'm gonna i'm gonna advertise real quick okay there's a real simple um, one example of how to make yourself a superhuman, go check out Wim Hof, uh, the Wim Hof method. Okay. We're talking about people that have been, um, with four days of training have been able to consciously manipulate their immune system proven. There is absolute proof. There's no question about whether or not what I'm saying is true. It's absolutely true. And you can go find all the documents, and the information that's out there. And that's not even the most profound thing. Okay. So, the Iceman, Wim Hof. Go check that out. You want to work on something? You want to have more than what you have right now? You want to make your brain function and your body function and your just all that shit better? Go do that. Or take my Udazeta class. Learn how to use your consciousness. Or go uh, learn learn some astrology from you guys. Learn how to understand the, the subtle frequencies of energy that are moving around. Any one of those things will make you superhuman. But if you did them all and you got time, you know, mm -hmm especially if you're not engaging in YouTube and Google and the other things that are constricting and censoring your information, you know? So I don't know. Unless you're watching wizard. Fact. That was good to say that too. Actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bless the tar channel. No. Give us a like <laughs> down below. Keep us yeah. on, on YouTube. Come on. Right. Well, I want to, I'll tell you guys about some alternatives to that soon that, that actually pay out in Bitcoin that are really good. There's the censorship has produced a backlash of some mm -hmm. really inventive and super fan, just fantastic stuff. Yeah, my hope, yeah, and my hope is that, um, and I think it will. The individuals out there that are just that have had it with that will promote it. It takes a little bit more work, and not everything's just spoon fed to you. You know, you got to mm -hmm. actually look for things and maybe even type a couple things in. But if you do that, you'll be keeping um, this kind of information flowing. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, and there one of those alternatives is actually, uh, you know, being well, it's, it's you know, opening up. We'll, we'll announce it at the end here uh, that we're going to be on. But you know, yeah, people are creating these alternative platforms, and you know, we have uh, one that will be on here that you know, they though they can't be censored on there, and right. it's, br it's bringing lots of different creators of all you know that are all trying to get this type of information into mm -hmm. a into a place where it, mm -hmm. that information can be easily uh, accessible. I just found one that I'm working, that I'm putting my material onto, and hopefully eventually classes and all that kind of stuff will be available there. It's called uh, lbry.tv. That's and, actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the it, platform that we're talking about is actually using that as one of their kind of backup uh, mm -hmm. content servers, basically. Mm -hmm. Yep. Once again, blockchain to the rescue. Yes. Yeah. 
And uh, I think BitTorrent and stuff like that is going to be doing some interesting stuff in the space as well with their coins. And stuff, because they've already been doing that since, you know, with the whole file sharing stuff. Right, right. That's pretty much what magnet links are, is decentralized blockchains of like this file is, and you can download all the bits and pieces from all the places at once. It's more efficient, mm -hmm. et cetera. So one of the smartest the things I there. think I can do to promote freedom is um, is buy a bunch of cheap machines, uh, run the Linux, run the Linux program on them, and leave them online all the time as nodes for a variety of my favorite, um, you know, um, supporters or, or functions. You know, mm -hmm. those nodes are super easy, and that's something that I think I'm going to do personally because yep. we've all got to do something to keep the information flowing around so that we don't devolve more so we can evolve instead right through mm -hmm. exposure of um information and also get the fuck outside and go walk around a little bit more often you know if mm -hmm. you're watching this that's a huge <laughs> yeah. way yep. it really is because all those that entire microbiome and and the viruses and the living soil and it's a living creature it's got a vascular system and it's got a um, um a neurological system it has all the soil has all those things in it, you know, just mm -hmm. like people do get out there and interact with that stuff a little bit. And, um, you know, yeah. breathe fresh air, stop get being those afraid. experiences. <laughs> you yes. got to take your mask off though, first to do that. Yeah. What mask? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So actually that is a good place to wrap this up today. And that's also a good segue into my first announcement that I actually just made a free course all about how you can get involved in cryptocurrency. Links in the description. Just how to get started, the basics all the way to the point where you're buying and selling. You'll have an idea about your investment strategy and that kind of thing. And uh, it's all built inside a Facebook group that I made. So go check that out. It's all free. Just use my links at the end. That's all I ask for it. May I? Um, I'm in that group. And... Uh... And I didn't know much about any of this stuff. And what I've learned so far has the, the education that I've gotten from that so far, and, and I've only been into unit one, has been tremendous. It's been really helpful and it's put me off in a lot of great directions and it's super cool. So yeah, guys, definitely check that out. I highly recommend it. I'm in the group too. Outstanding. Thank you for that. Yeah, uh, Brian will be going mm -hmm. through the group as well. Yep. And I actually got the idea by talking to Sean on the phone the other day. I was like, I've been wanting to do something like that. And I'm like, you know what? This time I'll go ahead and throw down and, and get that going. And I'm really pleased with how it turned out. So yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Awesome. Also, next thing is I'd like to announce that we are uh, now live on the One Great Work Network, A what Brian was just talking about a minute ago, a decentralized network of content creators that are all about teaching moral behavior and, and cosmic law and coming to that deep understanding. But each person mm -hmm. with bringing their own you know, voice and personality and, and presentation style to the table. So it's a really a great idea. And I'm blown away by the, the execution of it so far, the oh, yeah. presentation, and it's, it's looking really slick. So mm -hmm. um, I'll also link that down below. Go ahead and check that out. Me and Brian are both on there as, as separate people, and we'll be uploading Wizard Factory and, and probably other kind of stuff as well mm -hmm. on there. Yeah, very, very excited about that. Um, said it's, you know, it's a network that's all built on, like I said, understanding like cosmic law and looking at the causal factors and what are the solutions to that? Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of great information, a lot of great uh, content creators on there. So, so definitely check that out. You know, I'll definitely and then be checking it out. I didn't know about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the one great work network. Um, right. cool. Very good thing. But you know, as always, be sure to like, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know you can always get notified whenever we put something new out. Be sure to also check out our Patreon as well. We have a, a lot of kind of extra uh content early access things like that that you can get available on there and another little thing is that logan just did a really nice kind of revamp of the wizard factory website uh he added some really cool features on there where uh if you've ever had a consultation or bought any kind of a service from us or even just enjoy the podcast whatever it is you, you can go on there and uh rate it and leave a review and things like that so you know if you do get value from this or you had an interaction with us that you got value from we'd very much appreciate you going to the website and rating your experience on there as well as um 
we added a whole a whole bunch more uh, different astrological consultations and things that I'm now offering anything from like career consultations to relationships, family dynamics. It's there, there's quite a few on there. So, so check those out as well. And Sean, if you'd like, go ahead and let the viewers know where they can find you and what you're up to. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, um, so I do consultations and um, apprenticeships and a variety of other things in teaching, but the most common in the first place to start is going to be the school. Uh, the first class with that you would have to attend is called Uta Zeta. Uta Zeta. And that's right for right now, that's only available on Facebook as a learning group. I'm looking at other options, but um, you can reach me. Um, as a matter of fact, my phone number is on my website. You can reach to me on text or anything like that if you need consultation, schooling, or anything else, or if you want to know what's going on. Uh, the website is norsepagans.com. And um, that, that's pretty simple. And the class is Uta Zeta if you're interested in uh, learning how to, how to use your consciousness better. Mm -hmm. And I'll drop all those links below. But right on. Thank you. Description. Thank yeah. you, Sean, for being oh. here. Very, very, um, you know, interesting and enjoyable talk as always, brother. Right on, man. Thanks. It's always a pleasure to talk with you guys. I really, I really do enjoy it. And thank you for having me on. Thank you so much. It's our Appreciate pleasure. you coming on. Until next time, thanks for tuning in and be empowered, be inspired, and be encouraged.